Hi, and welcome back to the Trucking Scribe. It's Esther. Today we're still working on this journal that I started yesterday. We're going to sew in the signatures. So there's four signatures. I have cut some of it out to make it shorter. So I originally was going to do two videos to go with Val's Creations, the cream color digital. But it's winding up to be a lot more than I thought it would be. So I'm going to cut this one down. I posted earlier a video on constructing the cover. So t this afternoon, I'm going to post the signatures. And then in the morning, I'm going to post the video with all of these pages and the ephemera that I made. And some tutorials on how to make this. We're going to make one of these, one of these, and I had another one, but it's already in the journal because I've started, I'm a little further ahead, but I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you. So this is my template that I'm going to use. It's going to fit right here. I'm just going to put it over the top. First, what we're going to do because my template is not going to be in the journal, I'm going to, to mark it. So I cut it at two and a half inches right here. What I want to do since I have four. I'm going to do these at half an inch, straw line, move my ruler over, and what I'm looking at is this line, a half an inch line, it lines up up here all the way down, I need one more. That should be half an inch. Might be off a little bit right there. Be cutting in. So what I do next is I just take this and I fold it in half, and then I'm going to take this top part and I'm going to fold it down. Do not know where my good bone folder is. I'm just going to ink this so you can see the, the intersections. I am going to put top on one end because I want to know which direction my journal is going. I just want to get out my one. I have this with something. I don't know. I'm trying to remember what it was. I take my template and of course I'm going to take a couple of these and I'm centering this over that piece of and you can do this a lot of different ways this is just one way I like to do it because that holds it down so now didn't mark them, but we're going to put a hole here, here, and this will give us our four signatures. I'm going to move this up because the light's not as good. And I'm just going to poke, I'm going to move it to where it's over the styrofoam, and then I'm just going to poke in there. And honestly, this would probably be better doing it from the other side because see how that's poking out. But since I done started this side, we will go ahead and so I am poking holes in every every intersection right there. 
Okay, so I'm going to save my template. I'm going to put as inch fine four signatures. So right here is one. I want this line. I'm going to make it darker so I'll know. So here's two, three, and four. So the next time I make something this size and I don't have to measure it out again. So I still do need this. I'm going to fold it in half right here. Or in fours, whatever it wants to be. And I'm going to ink it up so you can see it. We use the same template to do my signatures. So I'm going to make sure that they're in the direction I want them. They are. All my writing's going that way, I think. And I'm going to put that one where I want it. I'm going to check this one. This one, the same thing. I'm looking to see if it's where I want it in the page. I generally like mine centered, but. You can bury them. I'll show you in another. So you can take paper clips. I have some. I don't know what I did with them, but I did have some other things. There they are. These clips they work great too. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and then my top so my writing is going that way so that means my top is that way and then you see what's going on I'm a little bit over on the top and the bottom what I'm going to do is kind of center it and mark my lines that I want these to to end up at when I put them in the other signature so I just use this so maybe you can see. So I got this lined up here and lined up up there. I'm just gonna poke a hole. Let's see where they came out at. I'm gonna lay that one that way. I'm going to do the same with my other ones. I'm going to figure out which way is up or should be up. You know what? I think I want to turn this one around. So this is the time I'll turn them around. Although after you sew them in, you can redo them. I'm going to turn my envelope this way. So I'm putting an envelope in it. I've got some coffee dyed paper and then some more coffee dyed paper that needs turning around. I'm taking, I'm going to open this up. Take my little pen, my little clips. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to line this up right here to where, see, it's lining up with that paper on both sides. And that my top is at the top. And I'm just going to cut it, or cut it. I'm going to poke it. Get my holes, that one was a little crooked. Let's see if I can do any better. Not really, but. I like to do my signatures from back to front. I'm going to look at them. Put that one. Actually, since these two are the same, I'm going to put that one in the back. And I'm going to lay them down like that. So what color thread do you think? I have this orange that I think would look good.
pink is not quite the right color. I do have these two colors. They're a little bit lighter of an orange. We'll do that one. What I do is I do about two and a half lengths, unless you want longer pieces of thread coming out. Grab the needle and the head the way I'm in. So I like the blunt tip instead of these pointy ones, but I don't have any at the moment. Because I don't need to poke holes. I've already poked holes in my papers. It's not a big deal. So you're not going to knot your paper. You're going to start in the middle hole, come out. Let's see how I'm going to do this. So I've got the middle hole, I'm going to the back. And this is a little more tricky because you got all these flaps, but see where I'm coming out at with my needle? I like to usually go towards the top. So I would go in right here. When I'm not on camera, I can do this a little bit better of getting these in their holes. So I got a tail. I'm going to pull that a little bit. I don't want it that long. Where's my other? Is that it? Yep. Yeah. I'm going to go back, go all the way to the bottom. And I'm coming out on the on the side right here. And I'm gonna fix these right now. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to press down these holes so they don't look so bad. That's why I should have started at the front or put the put the template on here and then the holes would have went inward. I may still have to do a little work on this, I don't know. But you can always cover it up too. So then I'm just coming back in this middle spot, trying to miss that thread. So I'm going to pull it with my hand out of the way because you don't want to split your thread. You won't be able to really get it to move if you do that. So when you pull your threads try and pull them the opposite direction. Then I check my front signature right here. I'm gonna push them in a little bit. I got overexcited, so tie this tight, but don't pull it so tight that you're ripping your paper so firmly. You can do a double knot. Usually, I will go ahead and just tie this like this. That way, whoever gets it can decide if they want to make it to have bangles or something like that. So then I'm going to take this out. Now I'm going to go and do the same thing. I use wax linen thread. I just, when I started book binding back in 2014, 2015, this is what I was told to use. At that time, I didn't know anything about junk journaling. Not the first thing. So, I have I've just gotten to where I really do like using it. You can use embroidery floss, the thick quilting thread. 
really anything that will that you can get in here that won't rip your paper because like the thread that I used on the sewing machine for this is a little bit thin. I think if you had a lot of layers to it, it might work. I don't know. I've not tried that. Uh, top, or middle, top, bottom, middle. So out in, out in. And sometimes you just have to play with the needle right here to get it to go in. Usually if you have your papers still clipped together, they will stay. So I'm just pulling this one and I'm going to pull. When you pull, pull the long way. Don't pull this way because this way will rip your paper. I don't know why that is. So again, I'm just tying a double knot and making a bow. This one's a little bit longer than the last one. So I'm just going to go in with some of this. Try not to get too much because now really I could do this to age the paper because on some of it so it kind of matches the inside. I just do this to, to bring down the brightness. And that was another one I'm working on. That's one why I'm thinking I already told y'all that. So you don't need a lot. You're dauber your sponge thing you don't if you have a lot on it and you start doing that you'll have big circles like in your paper so i just try to use what's in there and gently do this Another string to cut off, so we can put we can still put a lot of pockets on this thing. I like the front, I do like the feel of this already. Can you see how you're how I'm getting some of this color out of here to where it looks more aged? You know, I do it with all of it, I just kind of move it around, but especially like. These little edges where that paper is so white, I just like to come in there and get it. Okay. So now we have four signatures. Since my videos have gotten so long, I'm going to do a little flip through as I say goodbye. And thank you so much for watching. I'm going to upload this video tonight. Then in the morning, I'll have the other video, one of the other videos with the digital kit from Vows where we're doing ephemera and pockets and things. So I hope to see you in the morning. Thank you.